hello hello good morning good afternoon good evening wherever you are watching listening or you know tuned in from my name is iot and this is another episode of the niger fc podcast um, sorry it's been a while but as always i have my co-host smith lai thanks yeah. for joining us smith lai nice to nice to be you know i'm talking with you again um again like i said we apologize to our audience you know we've been a little bit away from you guys um but we're back now you know and we'll keep the consistency going um moving forward by by god's grace you know um but yeah we have a host of things to discuss today um so i think we'll just do a review of the past week of football you know um, we've missed a lot of action we've missed a lot of stuff so um stay tuned guys um interesting conversation coming up um let's start from um the review of the week i mean on tuesday wednesday we had champions league action um you know a number of nigerian players featuring the champions league not that many but still um i think the one thing of notes that happened in the champions league was victor simez napoli you know playing against real madrid in in the group stage they lost 2-3 um Osime wasn't able to get on the score sheets some people say that he was pocketed by Rudiger, you know. Um, what did you think of Osime's performance in the Champions League? You know, it was a good performance. I, I won't actually I have to be honest with you. But uh, it's just like, um, you know, if you look at Osime's performance in that game against Real Madrid, it's like, a, you know, slightly someone still thinking about the incident that really happened, you know, trying to prove himself right. So it's like a combination of... Uh, those things but well, it's one of these days it's one of the things that uh you know you see in football like i say always the napoli team today is not the same team as the napoli team of last season you know they don't really create opportunities they don't feed their strikers you know if, if, if you observe the game very well Ostima is the one trying to press high and win possession early so it's not as if the service is there compared yeah. to last season. That's mm-hmm. why, you know, it's going to be extremely hard for him this time around, but we just switch him best of So It's not as if he had a very bad game, but the whole team had a bad game. Okay, let, let me ask you this question, because whenever Osime scores, Nigerian fans will praise him. Ah, top striker, you know, everything. Whenever he doesn't score, Nigerian fans will insult his team, insult his teammates. Now, oh, everybody's playing for themselves. They're all selfish. So, do you think, in your mind, is actually a thing of the players, you know, not wanting to share the ball as much as before. Because, for example, like a Coracelia, is the same guy that gave Osime like 10 assists last season. So why wouldn't he want to pass the ball to Osime all of a sudden? Do you think that that's the case or people are just overreacting? You know, I think the way the team is set up, this that is actually what the difference. You know, the last season, you know, you can see that uh, Coracelia is always isolated against 1v1 with defenders. But mm. nowadays, you know, I think... Carastelia too, last season was actually what unknown commodity, you know. A lot of people didn't know him, but now people are really aware of his quality. They know that um he's the is the magician in that uh, in that midfield. He can yeah. do in that forward line, he can do and undo. So I think combination of those things and also the way the Napoli team, you know, they they they're a team that strives on counter attack now, you know, which is which I think is not probably what very good. I think it's more or less the way the team sets up. Not oh. only Osime or Cravastelia. I just think that um, a good coach will look for a way to actually what, set up a team and dominate and make oh. sure your striker doesn't have to come and defend all the time. Yeah, and I think I, I agree with you on that. You know, um, the coaching change has definitely been a negative, you know, influence mm-hmm. on on Napoli. They are struggling to to combine as well as they were combining last season. Um, obviously, their goals have reduced. Their wins have reduced. I'm really hoping that they can find a solution in time before the title goes away from them. You know, speaking yes. about general. Um, in the yeah. Champions League, I mean, I would still expect them to, you know, fight hard to qualify from their group. But Osime is definitely, you know, not performing as well, you know, not because of his, his own ability or, you know, his own lack of ability, but just because of how the team is, is performing. Um, okay, let's, let's move on to um, Thursday. Um, Thursday, obviously, Europa League, the Europa Conference League. Lots of Nigerian players across those two leagues. Um, so lots of action for our players. Um, but I'll pick out some things of note. Um, the first one I'll start on a relatively low note. Um, Chuba Akbom, um, he played 20 minutes for Ajax, you know, as they drew 1-1 against AK Athens. I mean, um, Akbom 
on fire last season with Middlesbrough. On fire. Championship player of the season. You know, um, gets a move to Ajax in the Dutch Eredivisie and he cannot even start for them. You mm-hmm. know, um, when he comes on, to be fair, the entire team is struggling. But, you know, he's not able to really impose himself on the team. What do you think is, is the situation there at Ajax? You know, you know, um, you know if you remember that um, Shuba Akpom did not have any precision mm. with Ajax. And um, he joined when, um, when he was injured for Middlesbrough. So he didn't even have any precision with Middlesbrough. He joined Ajax when he was injured. So that's, I think, one of the things that really slowed him down. You know, don't forget that um, he had a very good season. The previous season was not as good as this last season. So I think that um, the whole IS team is struggling because, um, you know, they have made some terrible decisions. You know, you sold your, yeah. your, your, your nearly the entire back line. <laughs> so you are playing a different back because, you know, you, you, you sold Kevin Bassi, Timba, you sold Timba, you sold Glenn, you know. You know, you saw Avarez. You know, you don't expect. And there's one other guy. Is this Sanchez went to Porto? You know, you see that um, it's a, extremely very. You know, they. I don't think they plan for this season. And yeah. this Ajax that I'm looking at, they might be struggling to escape relegation. But well, I yeah. hope that things actually will turn out well for them. For Chuba Akbo, you know, I think that um, it will blend. But what I think is that um, if there could be like, um, if there could be like a coach change towards the end, maybe. That one can change his fortune. But uh, for now, I think uh, Chuba Akbom is not, um, you know, really cutting it. But I just think that uh, it won't be long before the coach actually would lose his job. So I think that things can actually what, turn around. You know, sometimes when, they, they, when there's manager change, the players, you know, rally around, new beginning, you know, things change. Yeah. But the way Ayas is going, they will soon be long before they relieve their manager of the, of the job. Oh. Okay, okay. Um, and... Keeping the negative notes that we started on before we move into some of the positives. Um, Rangers, another team in poor form, played in the Europa League. They lost 2-1 against Aris Limasso. I mean, this is a team that on a normal day, you expect Rangers to beat them. You know, yeah. I mean, even if it's not going to be easy, you believe that Rangers will have the quality. The full match, um, 90 minutes in that game. And the only thing he had to show for his effort was one yellow card that he collected. Um, this has obviously has not been lighting it up for Rangers. Um, what do you think is the situation going on there as well? I don't think, think I don't know what is wrong with the data system around. You know, I think there is a pattern I seen in his career. It's a player that um, when they buy him outrightly, they have to loan him before he performs. Oh. <laughs> so uh, maybe that's going to be the new situation again in Rangers because um, and let, let, we have to be honest too. Similar to Chiba Akbo, the way Rangers is actually was playing is not good. The, the, the way Rangers is playing is not good. You know, they are not like uh, the Steven Gerrard Rangers. For example, now, if it was the Steven Gerrard Rangers, um, Steven Gerrard would have thrived in that team. So it's a team built on physicality and everything. So he's struggling, but I think that he's a guy that can still pick himself up. Oh. I think I can, he can still pick himself up. That's it. I think the whole team is struggling too. No, oh, yeah. I mean, the whole team is definitely struggling. Um, mm-hmm. I really want Dessas to do well because, you know, I remember when he made the transfer and people were talk- asking, oh, is it a gateway to Premier League? I mean, I was saying uh, at 28 years old, which gateway in they look for again? But mm-hmm. at the same time, you know, I do not expect things to go this badly. Um, yeah. It's still early in the season, so hopefully mm-hmm. they can switch things up. They can, you know, improve. But so far, it's not, it's not been interesting to watch. Um, yeah. Still in the Europa League, Igo Ogbu, our 23-year-old, is it 23? I think 23-year-old centre-back. You know, two Europa League games, two Europa League goals as a centre-back. Uh, I watched this match. It was a power header, um, you know, um, against FC Sheriff. And this was after he already assisted the first goal um, mm-hmm. for them on the night. You know, their team, they, they blew past Sheriff. They won 6-0. I mean, we had um, some Nigerian players on the Sheriff team as well. Um, but looking at Igo Ogbu in particular, um, has, has he impressed you? Yes, uh, for me, I, I think he has. You know, and I don't have any doubt about his ability. You know? uh, he's just uh, one, of the, you know, one of the players that are like a victim of the Nigerian system. That's what I would just say. Because if Igo Ogbu, Igo Ogbu, what actually was, you know, 
maybe he was born in Europe, he went to the proper academy at a very early age. Maybe he would have been, <laughs> would have been the yeah. Premier League now. So he had to pass his way through Norway before he can get to this place. Now, there's still a step further. Like yeah. maybe going to the French League or trying to go to Spain from or to Italy, then to the Premier League. Yeah. So it's just, I'm not surprised that he's doing well. It's just a player that, uh, you know, um, we should try out in Super Eagles, you know, just to see how well he can actually work fit. I'm not surprised he's doing well. He's one of the best players in our under-20 that played in 2019. And they still, it was not even, it was not even the just first choice. It was uh, Valentine and um, <laughs> Sawaludin, you know. Uh, so I was surprised that uh, it wasn't picked at the first choice. Clearly, was the best player during the African Championship in the Nigerian Republic. But I just, uh, you know, just to think that uh, he's a good player, he's setting them very well. And I think that uh, you know, we might be January. It's around the corner. Don't be surprised to hear transfers. But I think um, Igogo is really, really doing well. I'm not surprised about how he's performing, and I'm still expecting more from him. No, yeah, he's definitely impressed me as well. You know. I mean, mm -hmm. this is a player that I've been following for a number of years now, you yeah. know, since yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. his little strong days. And yeah. um, his trajectory, I'm, I'm happy about it. You know, last season I watched him play when he just joined Slavia Prague. And he had certain games that were good, some games that were not so good. You know, his mm -hmm. tackling was a bit off sometimes. His, his um, decision-making sometimes was a bit off. But so far this season, he seems to have, you know, fixed a, a, a large part of, of those um, errors or issues that he was having last season and he's been really impressive and for me another thing that I, I always love I love a goal scoring centre back you know um, a centre back that we can know that in times of um, set pieces you know when you get forward you are actually contributing something because you know that from corner kicks um, all these indirect free kicks defenders go always pack themselves for box but there are some players that then go enter that box every single time. They're not going to score one goal. Mm -hmm. You never hear anything. They're just dead to just add to the number. But, yes. you know, um, there are also some centre-backs over the years that you know that if the ball comes to this guy, man, this guy mm -hmm. will do something with him. Yeah. You know, and I'm happy that he's proven himself to be that kind of that kind of yeah. defender. They love him in Slavia, you know, yeah. and hopefully he can keep on growing. I'll be surprised mm -hmm. a little bit if he should leave in January. Honestly, I'll mm -hmm. be surprised mm -hmm. a little bit. Because he's one of their key defenders, you know. Um, but nothing is past him living in the summer, I think, you know. Yeah. It would be a very short trip to Czech Republic and maybe he can get a move to France or one of the other leagues um, that yeah. are higher ranked than, than the Czech League. Yeah, Czech. Um, but yes, Igor Ogu, um, good performance in the Europa League. And then finally, to wrap up Europa League before we go to the Conference League, um, Nathan Teller, your boy, um, scored <laughs> for Bayer Leverkusen. Um, in their 2-1 win away at Moda um, in the Europa League. His first goal for Bayer Leverkusen. Um, Nathan Teller, of course, still not a super good player, um, but, you know, he's one that a lot of people have been calling for, including yourself. A lot of people are, are fans of his play. Um, what did you think about him scoring his first goal for Leverkusen? Yeah, you know, uh, you know you could, I watched the game because of him. In fact, I watched, watched the game in like, a Portuguese station. What they were saying, I didn't understand. But they were just saying Nigeriano, and Nigeriano, Nathan Tela, Nigeriano. They were just I know. <laughs> so, you know, it's a player that have like declared his intention to play for the national team of Nigeria. You know, he said it's his dream to play for Nigeria. So I think he's more than a super good player. Like some people playing hide and seek. So he's just waiting for call up. So I'm happy that uh, he scored the goal. And if you see the if you see the relief in his face when he scored that goal. If you see the relief, you realize that, oh, I got this thing. And the, also the coach, too. If you see the relief when he scored, like, he was so happy. Because he's a player, I think, you know, that's got a lot of potential. I remember this quote from Rafael Sinoto, his former coach in Southampton. He said that, uh, this boy can play. He said, this boy can play. He said it before he went to score. And um, he went to score... Uh, how many goals in Burnley? When he was in Burnley, I remember the Burnley owner daughter composed a song. Nathan Teller, give us Nathan Teller. Like, sometimes you release Teller to them. Yeah. Burnley is suffering because of Teller, I can tell you. The world is there. Kole Osho is not doing what Teller is doing. Mm. Kole Osho might be, you know, might be skillful, but Teller is a poacher. So I think it's a big relief 
for him to score. And I'm pretty impressed with him. I know that um, he might not be part of the team of Nigerian team to the AFCON. When Bonnie faces uh, going to the AFCON, I think uh, Taylor can, you know, stamp his authority in that team and play mm. much better. Well, I'm, I'm really happy about it. And let's just call him a Nigerian player. Okay, okay. Yes. You know, I was also happy to see him score that, score that goal as well, you know, mm -hmm. um, because I'm someone that I've been saying that, no, I want him to start contributing more in attack if if he mm -hmm. wants to. I mean, for Leverkusen, of course, we've seen him mm -hmm. last season. You know, if he wants to have a say ahead of some of the options that we have, the Chukwezes, the Lukmans, you know, mm -hmm. ECC. Um, so I was it's happy Simon's, to see him. Yeah. yeah, you know, the Simons, because Simon has... And the Musas. <laughs> Um, but yes, um, I was happy to see him score score that goal for sure. Um, very quickly, the Conference League, nothing too exciting to talk about. I mean, Bratisai Samo um, was in action for Fenerbahce in their two new win over Spartak Tenava. Um, Oedika was in action for Club Brugge. Um, Rafi Durosimi, one of the you know players that has done quite well in the past month, um, was also in action for Victoria Pearson um, in their in their two one win. Um, I think the only thing that I really want to talk about is um, Gift Orban. Again, another game that he played in the Europa Conference League, unable to find the back of the net. Um, Gift Orban has not scored a goal since August. Mm -hmm. What's your level of concern on a scale of 1 to 10? You know, um, one, let me just uh, address that and I will say a few things on it. Because a lot of people think that um, I'm a Gift Urban's family. I'm a full Nigerian. My father and mother are Nigerians. I'm not, uh, by any means, a Togolese. Or one side of my family actually was Togolese. But I will say this thing. See, football is about your mental strength. No matter how strong you are, if you are inexperienced and you cannot pick yourself up, it's going to be hard. Gift Urban wanted to move. Gift Urban wanted to move. His best friend left for Germany. That they do Instagram live together. He left for Germany. You know, when those type of things happen and it's only you, they are now pushing. In fact, the amount they are asking for you is more than the one they sold uh, your best friend. Mm. So, since that transfer really affected him. In fact, the coach was even saying that he wasn't even scoring training. You know, it's someone that, you know, went to even fight with the opponent. You can see that frustration in him. You can see the frustration in him. He needs this international break to settle down and kick on. I know that, oh, this transfer window is over. Let me try and play myself and see maybe what can actually what happen in January. I'm not worried one cent, one pound about Gift Urban's ability. When Urban starts scoring, he will score goals again. I saw him play yesterday against uh, Jenk, against Jenk, the club of um, Arokodare. And he scored a goal. I was even celebrating on Rosetta Run Life. He scored a goal. But unfortunately, VR chopped that goal. It was marginally, marginally offside. Though we didn't see the line, though. Maybe the line is parallel or perpendicular. You know, these people can draw lines now that are <laughs> microscopic. So, we didn't see the line, but he said it was Mike Daniel offside. So, I think that, I'm not worried. I think that uh, it's about confidence. When he realized that uh, the transfer window is closed, I can only perform well and move in January. Then, I think it's going to be better. Mm. I, I'm not really worried about it. Okay. Um, I mean, I would say, for me, my level of concern is maybe like a 4 out of 10. Um. I'm just concerned because he's stuck. Um, I believe that he still has the ability, but consistency is one of the more important things in football. You know, you need to show it on a consistent basis to be rated that highly. A lot of people would start to think that maybe was this guy just a one-season wonder? You know, um, you know, is it that he cannot replicate the same form that he had last season? And then I think for me, based on what you said, I think that that is the biggest difference between amateur and professional. Mm -hmm. You know, um, a professional, you have to understand that things don't always go your way, mm -hmm. but you still have to kick on and do your job. 
Yeah. You know, in all our various walks of lives, um, of life, we have different kinds of jobs that we work on. Mm-hmm. You can go to work today, your boss, you know, tells you to do something or talks to you anyhow, you're not quite happy. It mm-hmm. does not mean that your level of performance will now drop for the next five weeks. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have to keep on performing at a high level. And that's yeah. the only thing for me, because if truly the transfer is what is affecting, ah, August is when transfer window closed now. We already mm-hmm. enter October. You have still not picked yourself up. You know, um, then that's mm-hmm. when, that's what is making me a little bit concerned. Because, mm-hmm. again, like I said, that's the difference between an amateur player and a professional. So, Gift Urban, mm-hmm. you know, if you are upset that you couldn't move, sorry, eh? but it has passed. You need to pick yourself up. You need to start scoring again. You need to raise your stock even higher than it was last season. And mm-hmm. you will have those suitors coming for you again in the future. But yeah. if you're not able to perform anywhere close to that level or at that level, then it's going to be difficult for you to get the move that you want. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's just it for me. Um, I, I really wish um, him all the best. You know, mental health is now a very serious thing in football. Um, yeah. So hopefully he's mentally strong. You know, he's not um, beating himself up too much. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I really want to see him scoring goals again and uh, performing at a high level so that we can sing his praises to the sky, you know, and, mm-hmm. and let the world know about this young Nigerian striker. And so that yes. it doesn't seem like, you know, just the once is in one that. But, mm-hmm. but yeah, um, that is it for the European um, competition. Um, moving on, moving on. Um, this weekend of football saw, you know, so many different Nigerian players in action. Um, we at Eagle Tracker over this weekend, we tracked over 300 different matches. Mm-hmm. You know, that's crazy. Over 300 different matches from about 110 different leagues around the world. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when I say these numbers, it amazes me because people be like 110 different leagues. Ah, how far? How, how is it possible? Mm-hmm. But the interesting part is there's a Nigerian playing on every, every corner of the earth. Mm-hmm. No matter which angle you look. There's a Nigerian that is playing there. Um, a couple interesting things to note. Um, some players that, that performed well. Um, in Czech Republic, Wale Musa Ali scored you know, the winning goal for Dynamo Chesky, um, assisted by a fellow Nigerian, Kodri Adediron, you know, in their mm-hmm. Czech League victory over Kavrina. Um, mm-hmm. Wale Ali is a player that just joined the club um, in the summer. You know, his... His his rank is I think his um, ability his rank is rising um, slowly but steadily and you know he's one that could potentially be in a in a better league in, in a couple years um, I think so you know he's been doing quite well um, a few years ago I can't remember which league he was playing in he was playing in a very low level league you know a mm-hmm. couple years ago and now he's yeah. in the Czech league you know if he can maybe get like. 12 goal contributions this season, you know, it, it would do some some good for his yes. for his rating. Um in England, um in the English Premier League, Alex Iwobi and Calvin Bassi were both in action, you know, for Fulham. Um mm-hmm. in their three one victory over Sheffield United. Yes. Um nothing too too exciting to talk about. You know, they had decent games. Calvin Bassi was a second half sub, um, but they were both in action. Um also in the Premier League, Frank Unyeka was in action for the last 20 minutes um, as Brentford fell to a 2-1 defeat um, yeah. against Manchester United. Um, Frank Unyeka, I feel like he has accepted his role as a bench player in Brentford. He doesn't, whenever I watch now, it does not appear to me like he's fighting to become a starter. He just knows that, okay, 15, yeah. 20 minutes every match, then go sub me on, shall I go play, yeah. you know, to close the game out. Um, I wish he was he was pushing more. You know, I would love to see him start. Mm-hmm. Brentford is a steady Eddy club. You know, they are not going to win anything, but they are not also going to go down. Um, so it would be nice if he can at least push himself a bit more and maybe rise to a higher level. But hey, maybe this is just his level and, you know, he cannot mm-hmm. do more than what he can do. Um, but yeah, um, in the EFL Championship, um, we had senior man Kilechi Ayanacho on target again for the third, you know, league game in a row um, to help Leicester City win 2 new against Stoke City. And Oyeye Wilfred in DD, yeah. you know, creating a number of goals better and doing well in that, in that new position. Um, so 
What do you think about Anna Tran in this um, form at the moment? You know, playing for their club. You know, um, you know, I'm really happy that uh, that uh, we can see these guys actually were doing well. Kelechi, you know, is one of the players that he was, you know, you know, I really like, and I like that the way he's cutting it in the championship. You know, you know, you know, it's gonna be a new low if Kelechi gets in the championship and he's not scoring goals. You know, yeah. it's gonna be a new low. So I didn't expect anything less than that. But the good thing is that the overall team performance, the coach is bringing like a new identity to that yeah. team. Uh, it's just like uh, is they are playing like Roberto De Zerbi of Brighton. Let's say like a new identity to to Leicester now. And I think that uh, if that by March, eh, Leicester City will be promoted. You say, <laughs> by March, <laughs> by March they will be promoted so back to the Premier League. The way they are going, they don't seem to, in fact, to want to lose any game. Yeah. They are play, you know, you, it's a team that you see that uh, no, they're gonna win this game. They they both the best players in the Championship. They are coming with some of their players that have played before. In fact, some of them are even internationals, like uh, Pereira, like uh, Fa, Fai. They're internationals. So mm-hmm. I'm happy that Tikalichi is doing well. And also with Fred. I've criticized him in the past that he's not really doing well. But I think at that, at that time, he's trying to learn the role, the new role. Maybe with Fred will be the new solution to our elusive, creative role in the Super mm-hmm. Eagles. And that would be very crazy. You know, <laughs> and the funniest thing is this. I remember with Fred. When Fred started his career in the formative years, with Fred was um, a defender. Mm. When he went to Jenk, he became a left back. Do I remember getting a played him once at a left back in the game against Zambia in the World Cup qualifier in Lusaka? Mm. He moved to midfield when he got to when he, when he was in Jenk. Then from there, midfield again in Leicester, the first midfield. Now he's playing attacking midfield. The next position for with Fred is striker. to be a striker. So when with Fred is a striker, then Maybe we are, we are playing one game. We now have a red card, a goalkeeper red card. We just see with Fred. Oh, yeah, where your goalkeeper like Giroud? Yeah, where goalkeeper Jesse? Go and play in the goal. That is what is next now. The game, yeah. but you know, I'm happy for him that uh, he's settling. And I think that uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Maybe his contract is going to renew his contract. But uh, you know, good thing that he's getting his form now. I just hope that it's going to be injury free before we go to Ivory Coast. And and yeah, I mean, I'll say the way things are going for both Kelechi and um, Wilfred, I'm very happy that they did not move to Turkey, you know, um, because Turkey would have been a different ball game altogether. You know, yes. Enzo Maresca has Leicester City playing a very fantastic style of football. You mm-hmm. know, they are moving the ball well. They are players are not just running around. They are moving from side to side, stretching out the opposition, you know, and a lot of the goals that they are scoring are beautiful team goals. You know, mm-hmm. it's not just one person trying to do magic. I mean, yes. even Jimmy Vardy is scoring goals again. That's to show you how well the coach has everybody playing. Um, yes. And then Kelechi Anacho has found his feet. Like you said, it would have been a low for Kelechi if, after all the experience that he has garnered in the Premier League. If he could not score in the Championship, then that would have mm-hmm. been a bad sign. Um, right, so, right. good and not too surprised that he's scoring goals. You know, and indeed, in this new role, it's, it's so interesting to see. Can he mm-hmm. adapt that role for Nigeria? I don't know because do we have a defensive shield um, that can take his place at the back as solid as he is. Um, but still, it's, it's nice to see them playing at this level. And speaking of playing in goal and um, Olivier Giroud, um, Giroud's teammate, Samuel Chukwese. Another game for AC Milan. Another game without a goal and without an assist. In fact, he was subbed off. And then his replacement, Christian Pulisic, came on to score the winner for AC Milan in their game against Genoa. Um, is there any way that Chukwueze one will become a first team, a starting eleven player for AC Milan? And two, how do you think he can he can start to to deliver some contribution in that attack? You know, um, maybe to criticize him so that he can continue to perform well. Because I, when I criticize him, did his form changed <laughs> and people came to my DM. So I think I should criticize him now. So remember, if I do that, it will, it will start performing. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, people can come to my DM again. Maybe it's like a jinx. I want to, like, jinx it. But I will say this thing. I saw the game. And if I was POD2, I would take him over at half time. Mm. If I was POD2, I would take him over at, uh, at half time, you know. Uh, it did not actually work. It didn't do well. And the problem is this. Your... 
your competitor, like your person that actually what, you know, uh, that you are together in the same position, that person is actually what, scoring goals. So it becomes very difficult for you to break into that team. But for me, I think the, his performance is, no, is I, I can see him playing more in the defensive parts, like trying to cover the right back and, you know, yeah. he needs to go, be adventurous, go forward. And when he actually what goes forward, I think um, he's going to be a lot, lot more better the game than for him. For me, you know, I think the AC Milan jinx is striking again that Nigerian players don't perform well, you know. And some people that are listening to me now, they are AC Milan fan. They will know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, but uh, I just hope that, uh, you know, things change for him. I hope that um, he can actually what, get himself back. I hope that, uh, you know, this international window, he can use that one to relax. And when he comes back, he should be better because they, yeah. they are giving him opportunities now and he's, he's not taking it. No, yeah, he's not. He's definitely not taking it. I mean, and like you said, all the competition that he has, they are contributing. Rafael Liao, three goals, three assists. Um, Pulisic, I'm not sure Pulisic starts, but I know Pulisic has a number of goals um, and assists as well. I think Pulisic has four goals, one assist. Even um, his fellow Nigerian brother that is in the team, um, who plays for Switzerland, mm -hmm. um, even Noah Okafo. Noah Okafo has two goals. So he's the only one in that front line that right now is not really contributing to the team. And I, I think it doesn't bode well for him. Um, Chukwe is a player that, of course, we Nigerians, we like, you know, we think he's, that he's a very great talent. Um, he just needs to step up, man. Samo, he has to step up. Um, we want to see more from him. This is the highest level that he has played at so far. And if he does not pick himself up very quickly, then it will start to look as if maybe Villarreal was his level. You know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I, I don't want to believe that Chukwese cannot play well in the Serie A or cannot play yeah. well for a team like AC Milan. Mm -hmm. um, so he needs to pick himself up. You know, I hope it's one of those cases of just taking a little bit of time to adapt and when the goals start pouring, then the goals will come in plenty. Um, yes. But right now, he's not looking too good. You know, like you said, um, yanked off the field at halftime against Genoa, not even like you're playing against um, Juventus or Inter Milan or something like that. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And most of his matches, to be fair, have not been, you know, that good. Um, so yes. lots of work for Samuel to do. Um, but hopefully, you know, he can solve it and he can, he can move forward. Um, yeah. Okay. Next league, um, very quickly, and player that I want us to talk about is um, in Portugal, Kelechi Mwakali. You know, um, had a good game, assisted a goal. Um, Chavez won. Chavez won a match, um, four yes. two, um, mm -hmm. in the Portuguese Premier League. Um, yes. What do you think um, about Mwakali's performance this weekend? You know, do you mm -hmm. think that? If he can continue performing, assisting goals, you know, like this, do you think that maybe he can find his way back into the national team? No, um, for me, I think, uh, you know, he's actually what's performing and he's doing well now. So this performance, I hope this performance can get him a new club first. Mm. Not uh, playing that base, get him a new club. So when he gets a new club, then we cannot talk, start talking about what national team. Because in this club now, he's not facing any competition. He's like head and shoulders above all of them. Mm. He's like their father. So I think that um, if he can continue to perform well like this, he should be able to get a move to like a clubs like Braga. You know, I don't know. Braga is not a bad club. Clubs like Braga. Mm. Or, uh, I'm not talking about Porto now because I don't think you want to go to Porto again. <laughs> <laughs> so Braga, I'm not talking about Benfica. Braga. Maybe you even go to Boavista. Eh, hey, Boavista is even still better. Braga. Yeah, I think Braga is the third one too. The guy after the two ones, I think it's Braga. Not Estore again. You know, Braga. I think so. So just in getting to get to that level then from there without talking about the nationality. Because you know, if you look at that position too that is played, he's played the Portuguese league. You know, and um, you know, you, I, I think it should get get you know perform well on a regular basis. Then we cannot talk about the moving to a different club, then to the national team. Mm. Um, okay, take it very quickly to um, Canada. Um, Ibrahim Sunusi, you know, young player, um, plays for CF Montreal, got a goal and an assist. 
um, in their game against Portland Timbers. Montreal have been struggling a lot. And, you know, this game that they won helped them end a seven-game winless, winless run. Um, so this is a player that I think can be very hot sometimes and then can go very cold. You know, um, I, I don't know what to say. They're trying to qualify for the playoffs in the MLS. You know, mm-hmm. hopefully they can. Um, in the same league, they have, you know, Uwe Bodo's, um FC Cincinnati that just mm-hmm. won the supporter shield and, are, you know, they're mm-hmm. flying high in Cincinnati. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, Sunusi was able to get a goal and assist. You know, um, one of the assist was for a Ghanaian player, um, Opoku. I think that's his name. Yeah. 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 You know? Opoku, yeah. And, Very friendly player. No, yeah, the guy is a, is a good talent. But the thing mm-hmm. with Montreal, because eh, I'm, I'm in Canada, so I see this. The way they, they move on from one player to the next is if this Opoku guy now undergoes like four games, he no score goal. They will start insulting him. That was rubbish. Is this one? Mm-hmm. That one. Who is the next player? Because I've mm-hmm. seen it. I remember when um, Chino Sofo was scoring goals for them. They were hyping him. They were praising him. Now, he played a few games, did not score goal. They will be insulting him. Ah, why, why is he even on the team? This was so down, down. So <laughs> the fans are very difficult like that. Mm-hmm. But the thing, with, the thing with the fans is when they are winning, they support you. But when mm-hmm. they are not winning like this, they start to insult you at every corner. Um, but yes, um, Ibrahim Sunusi, you know, hopefully he can pick up his form. They can qualify for the playoffs. And even me, if I want to go and watch them in the playoffs, um, yeah. if, they, if they make it in. Um, and then finally, to wrap up, um, Saudi Arabia. Mm-hmm. Henry Oyekuru has yeah. finally scored his first goal for Al Fayyar since joining yes. them, you know, in the summer. Um, Oyekuru, I mean, Super Eagles player and hasn't been in the team in recent times, but, you know, has been there um, in the past. I think maybe every league you still need to adapt, maybe. Let's just mm-hmm. say it like that, that. Even if you go mm-hmm. to MPFL now, you have to adapt. Mm-hmm. But the biggest surprise for me is that, and mm-hmm. he was thinking of the place. Like, he was thinking of the place. Terrible mm-hmm. performances, poor performances, average performances. And to be fair to him, in his last three matches, he has one goal, one assist. Mm-hmm. But I've been so shocked as to how he's been playing in, in Saudi. Honestly, um, nothing fantastic, nothing impressive um, for a player that has played for Everton, Monaco, you know, um, Galatasaray, King of, King of Galatasaray himself, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, his performance in the Saudi Pro League has just not been it. Kudos to him for getting his first goal um, this weekend. Um, what, what, what do you think about uh, you know, his performance um, so far in the Saudi Pro League? Uh, you know, like you said, you know, if there is any, any I guess you to actually what he use to qualify his performance in Saudi League, he's, that is more than shocking. You know, I don't know what else to use. You know, he's a player that... Uh, Going to Saudi League, we think that um, Saudi League is our new farmers league. <laughs> that uh, <laughs> that when you get there, you should be able to eat the guys running. And uh, you know, it's a guy very experienced. But apologies to, uh, I'm, no, I'm, with due respect to Henry Onyekuru, you know, there's his level of talent is not just top there. You know, he's a guy that is you know like thrive in all these leagues. You know, anytime they see him, they try to push him to the big league. You know, he he gets cold. I remember in Monaco, everything was planned before you know it. They have to promote the player. In fact, because of him, I want to subscribe then to be watching BT Sports because of Monaco. Before yeah. you know it, now it's like one game, second game, not the bench, third game, not in the list. That is, in fact, that, that was how his career actually was went in Monaco. So I think, um, you know, if you go to Saudi Arabia League as Nigerian, you know that. Uh, this is like uh, you know the the beginning of the you know of the end. So let's just uh, you know wait. You know let him make you know the money he actually was make plan a very good life. And uh, you know I know that uh, officially he might not have to retire from Super Ego, but uh, yeah, he has don't retire in his mind <laughs> from Super Ego. Officially he might not retire though, <laughs> but he's let retired let already. <laughs> let me ask you a question about the crew because. He's, he's one of those players that strikes me as odd, quote-unquote, or different um, amongst the Nigerian players. Do you think he cares? 
genuinely. He doesn't like, care. That's do you one. think he cares? Because I started no. to see signs of this to be fair last season at another demi story. You know, mm-hmm. he played last season there alongside Babajide Akintola. Mm-hmm. And Akintola was performing better than him. The day mm-hmm. he happens to score a goal, he posts on his social media, you know, he's happy, he's excited. Mm-hmm. Then he goes another four matches, stinking up the place. As we're talking, I'm looking at his um, match ratings. Um, you know, last season, I'm talking about some matches where your rating is 5.2. Mm. He doesn't seem to care. And then now he has gone to Saudi, you know, obviously to make his bag. Um, and mm. he's, he's supposed to be at his peak now, at least on paper, he's 26 years old. You mm. know, so he's supposed to be when he's getting to his best. Do you think he's just one of those players that, you know, I beg, I go do it and I won't do job. You know, anything yeah. happen, happen. You know, uh, I think it's a player that doesn't care. And um, I think it's a player that, um, you know, I've not even benefited, you know, the agents. I don't know maybe the agents, the people around him have not really even worked. I remember one of the one of his people saying that um, uh, Jordan Ayu, that is better than Jordan Ayu. Ayu is still playing now and, uh, in Kisa Palace. And uh, Onyekuru is uh, there. He said that, uh, you know, I remember when he scored those goals in uh, in Belgium. And it was, you know, he said Arsenal was um, audio Arsenal deal. You know, <laughs> the audio one. Not the real one, but the audio one. But they were saying it in, uh, in some paid, uh, like, uh, I don't want to mention their name. They keep fighting on Twitter. So not some Nigerian platform, paid one, reporting Arsenal. So I wanted to say this thing. Then the, the, this thing came out, The one of the spokespersons, I don't know, came out and said, oh, it's better than... Uh, and, and then they are used. They cannot clean his shoe. But, you know, you can see that what I don't, you know, get levels now. So I think that uh, with due respect to him, he's a good player, but uh, the talent is just, just we cannot take him further. And he's a player that thinks that uh, maybe it's even time, you know, for him to go. He says, at 26, at 26 is when you eat your peak. In fact, at 26 is when you are ripe to play, you are experienced. But if at 26, you are planning for retirement, you know, I, I, I rest my case. Mm, mm. I rest my case on that, yes. All right. Um, Kuru, wishing you the best of luck. You know, hopefully things can can sort themselves out for you in Saudi. And at least yes. they don't, it would be embarrassing if they don't want you in Saudi again. So mm. <laughs> hopefully that does not, that does not mm-hmm. happen. Um, very quickly, to wrap up yeah, um, yeah. the weekend conversation, um, on Sunday, um, a couple of things to note. Um, I'll start from Victor Osime again. Napoli against Fiorentina. Osime won a penalty. Back on penalty duties. Back on his score sheets. You know, scored the penalty. Um, but then Napoli lost that game one three. You know, at home against Fiorentina. Another bad performance for the team. Another bad defeat. Um, it looks like this Scudetto. Don't they go far away from from Napoli? After the thirty three years that they used to win that one, they went to go and call their player coconuts. They went to go and uh, make a meme, make this thing on social media. Mm-hmm. Now they cannot mm-hmm. even they cannot keep up again. You know, are you concerned about Napoli's chances this season or about Osimhen's um, performance? I'm not concerned about Napoli for the first time. For the first time in a, in a long time, I saw, I watched Napoli play and I think that they should lose. Honestly, mm. I'm sorry. I'm saying it from my mind now. I watched them play, just want, because the day Victor was on the bench, I want them to lose. I just want Victor to score as good as they lose, honestly. Because we are all Napoli fans because of Victor mm. And if you are, if some people say that they are a Napoli fan, Kano chapter, Napoli fan, uh, what I call chapter, Napoli fans, Bini chapter. It's a lie. It's because of Victor Osime. That's why we're all Napoli fans. Mm. So, and, you know, the way they are performing is not even encouraging to watch. When Spaghetti was there, we can see the way they are playing good football. In fact, when the young man got a penalty, I was just praying. I put me back. My streaming, my, my streaming was low, was like slow. I saw it on Twitter first <laughs> before the go enter. So when because when you want to play penalty like that, I normally close my eye. I don't see, I don't watch it. You get it? <laughs> so I just said, say, go Victor on the number of Twitter. So that's when I just ah, don't say, oh, that means that he goes score. 
So I use my mind and uh, hey, watch up. But what I would say is that they're not doing well. And I think that uh, the coach is buying time. Don't be surprised that after the international break, you might see a different, uh, different management. Napoli. You know, and I think for me, the only thing is, look at Paletti. He mm-hmm. won the league. He said, peace, guys. I'm going to go and rest. Mm-hmm. He left when the ovation was high. It was yes. loud. Everything mm-hmm. was great. Our old boy, Victor, you know, he did not leave. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden now, things don't, things don't seem to be going in the same direction. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, hopefully, you know, he keeps on scoring his goals. Not just penalties, you know, I want him to score from um, outfield play. But at least I'm happy that, you know, he was able to take and score a penalty because we saw him miss in the past. Yes. Um, but yeah, um, Osime on the score sheet again, Napoli with a defeat. Um, moving on, Samo Kalu, our long lost, you know, dazzling winger, you know, um, back on the goal contributions this weekend, playing for FC Lausanne Sports in the Swiss Super League. You know, of course, he joined them on loan from Watford, where his career was essentially just wasting away since he joined them. Um, and you know, he was able to get an assist, create four chances in total. You know, um, fingers crossed he does not get injured again. Um, but well, are you happy to see Samuel Kalu at least trying to pick himself and pick his career back up again? As a fan, I'm a big fan of Samuel Kalu, and I'm happy that he's back playing. You know, like I say, that uh, when Victor Moses left the national team, Samuel Kalu should be his natural replacement. But unfortunately, Samuel Kalu himself now is like he's living for Bob Victor Moses because the way things are, is uh, it's just unfortunate that the injury keep coming. Honestly, yeah. I'm a big fan of him. I thought that uh, the game against Ghana in Abuja that we actually watched drew. If Kalu was there, it would conjure something. Yeah. Kalu is like the Genet Ross Joker there. You know, he can play right wing back. He can play right wing. He can play from the left. You know, all those. I remember one of the performances against um, against Libya in Uyo when he got a score trick and he scored one goal too. You know. Like, very good player, but unfortunately, he has not been, like, lucky with injury. You know, since he was in, you know, he, he was in Belgium, from Belgium to France. Things didn't go well in France towards the end. So, he moved to, you know, I don't know, but uh, he's good at his back play now. He's back playing in um, Swiss League. And um, he should just look for a new club. Because Watford said they're fighting relegation in, uh, in the oh, championship. Okay. So, he should just look for, after... Maybe after this season, just look for a way to, you know, get uh, something. But one thing that you will know can I call you for, and I think that this is lifelong um, achievement, or is that he played in the Premier League. Mm. <laughs> well, that's the pinnacle of his of his Yeah, game. he played um, Premier League. Okay, let, let me ask you this question. Is there any world, is there any world that Samuel Kalu gets back into the Super Eagles? Samuel Kalu to the Super Eagles. Let's say he keeps on, you know, performing like this in Switzerland. Do you think there's like, or is that time just passed? You know, or do you think there's any chance that? I, I see here, Samuel Kalu in the mood of uh, Eri Ojekuru. I think, uh, yeah. I think they're both 26, isn't it? Uh, Kalu, how is Kalu? Let me confirm. But just it should confirm. be about 26, 27. Yeah, because all of us are 26. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they are all 26. So, yeah, can't be 26, yeah. Okay, it's 26, you know. I, you know, I know that, uh, you know, it's just add that, uh, you know, 20, 20, this 26 years old in uh, Nigeria is, um, you know, that age is uh, where some of our players, you know, try to step down, you know. But mm-hmm. I think Samuel Kalu's time, except something drastic happened to our players. In fact, the position that he's playing, you know, he go wait. Mm. Yeah, you know, he go wait. Because you can't see, keep see people springing up all the time. He, I think he will wait. He will wait. I think uh, it's more or less over. Mm. Okay, okay. <laughs> and then to wrap up the weekend review, um, Victor Boniface. Another day, another goal. Seven goals in the German Bundesliga. You know, he could have had two or three in in, in this game um, against 
um, Cologne, in all honesty. Um, but he scored one, you know, seven games, seven goals. Mm. At the beginning of the season, how many did we predict? I think we said 15 or 12. Was, I would he was 15. We said 12 for, for 12 him. For yes, we said 12 for him, and yes. He never even reached halfway. Yes. He's already more than halfway, you know, to the 12. Yes. And the yes. way things are looking, honestly, almost every match that Leverkusen play now, Yes. I'm expecting Boniface to score a goal. To score a goal, yes. You know, mm-hmm. how impressed are you with this guy's performance? So you far? know, um, no, kudos to, I'm going to mention one person's name now. Kudos to Mr. Bayer Adigu, who's um, the CEO of Baggy Sports Management. You know, he said something that uh, I should watch out of it to Boniface. And also kudos to IoT, the CEO of uh, Igu Striker, too. Two of you, I keep on mentioning it. You saw something in this player that is nothing. <laughs> and you kept on saying that uh, hmm, we talk about this face. It's, uh, you know, you can always say, ah, in the ball. Like, I was wondering that, uh, who in the day this guy? But, in fact, that potential, and now with the CM, you know, kudos to you guys that saw it early. I'm very impressed. I was surprised the way he performed. And don't be surprised that um, this guy might beat Victor Simmons. Um, transfer record of ten grand players, you know, because uh, the way it is, the way it's going, you know. What I was also by the goose, I said that uh, we might be selling this guy for 100 million very soon. 100 million very soon. He said that uh, since when he was young, say, you no, know, this guy is a baller. So kudos to him, and I'm really happy that uh, he's doing well now. When they scored the two goals, I was, you no, know, I was waiting that, ah, the reason why I'm watching this game is because of Victor, because a lot of the games players have been playing, but because, it's because of Victor. I beg, do something. And it's, when he scored that goal, I was so impressed. And he also got one one on one that he actually what missed when he actually what you know sent it um, wide the post. But the keeper did a very good job on it. So I'm happy that he's back. I don't see him being Bundesliga top scorer, but um, I think his goals yeah. score a lot of goals. Yeah. And I see that Bundesliga top scorer is the way that grassy guy is moving, man. <laughs> <laughs> just uh you know I, I i see him doing extremely well again yeah. you know, more than what, what, what you expected but afcon will slow him down because uh, he's going to miss afcon he's going to be there in afcon yeah i mean gracie too is going to be there is the guinea qualifier for afcon yeah they qualified yes yeah so gracie too is going to be there for afcon so that's hurricane when hurricane will not start shining mm-hmm. <laughs> yes um but yeah, um, Victor Boniface, very impressive so far. You know, I'm happy for him. Mm-hmm. You know, he's the personal person of mine. You know, we talk every once yes. in a while, you know. Um, and, you know, he's just enjoying himself, enjoying his football, you know. Very soon, mm-hmm. he's going to become a bigger star than he imagined and he's going to have to take his affairs a lot more seriously. But I'm happy with how um, performance is going. You know, interestingly enough, let me tell you one story and for anybody watching. There was a company. Hmm, Mm. That when Boniface was in Belgium, yes, I was trying to broker a deal for him between him and the company. Yes, I think Boniface even agreed. I won't mention the figure, yes. but it was not. It was less than less than fifty thousand euro. Mm. Was the payment, mm-hmm. and the company backed out of the deal mm-hmm. because they said they are not sure about this guy. Hmm. You know, they they said no, 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 that they prefer other players that they're not sure about this guy. Hmm. A few weeks ago, I texted the owner of that company. I said, you see what you missed out on? <laughs> <laughs> because that would, have been, that would have been a fantastic player for them to have signed yes. for cheap. Mm-hmm. You know, they could have signed him for cheap as yes. a brand ambassador. He would have been repping their brand. As he has become a star now, that's how he would have pushed their brand into the eyes yeah, of yes. you know, hundreds of thousands of people. Mm-hmm. But they did not they did not want to do the deal. You know, one mm-hmm. of the things that we face in this branding world, sometimes they don't value our Nigerian players even when they are performing well. Yes. You know, and this company, they are originally from Belgium, so it's not even like it was a foreign, it was a yeah. company from Belgium. Mm-hmm. And they, they saw what he was doing, they said, No, 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 we're not convinced yet, blah blah. And they pulled out of the deal. But now look at look at Victor Boniface and look Good. at what he's doing. If they yeah. want to come and sign him now, they will have to pay like 200 k Yes. You know. But but yeah, you know, I'm very excited for him, you know. And yes. hopefully more and more to come yes. in the future. Um, yes. okay. 
Um, okay, so it appears that we're not going to have time to talk about Super Eagles because yes. we're already at limit. So, yeah. guys, for those of you watching or listening, you'll have to watch the next video for the Super Eagles um, conversation. Um, but just to wrap up um, this episode, Smithline, let us decide our player of the month for September 2022. Yes. You know, um, I don't know if you have some options, but we at Eagles Tracker, you know, we had picked out three players. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'll add one more player to the list, you know, for the sake of it. One of the unfortunate things is that, you know, attacking players always get more props yeah, than yeah, other, yeah. And yeah. other um, positions in the field. But I will start with um, Wilfred Ndidi. Mm-hmm. You know, um, had a good had a good month for Leicester City in the mm-hmm. EFL Championship. Um, I think in September he played um one, two, three, four, five, six matches. You know, he got one goal, he got one assist, and he put in some good performances. Just for context, in October, indeed, he already has three games, three assists. Mm-hmm. So he's already in the running for October Player of the Month. Yes. But, yes. Um, in this in September, you know, one goal, one assist, and some good midfield performances. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we had Moses Simon, you know, mm-hmm. who started to come back to life, you yes. know, for FC Nantes in France. Yes. Um, I know he wanted to get a move before the move didn't happen, so now he's back in form again. Um, yes. In September, four games, two goals, and three assists yes. for um, Moses Simon. Um, we had Victor Boniface in September as well, yes. six games. Five goals and three assists. Yes. And then we had um, Rafiu Drosimi. Um, five games in September, six goals and two assists for Victoria yes. Pearson. Yes. Um, who impressed you the most in the month of September? Uh, it has to be the 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 guy that dances that dances the funny dance when he, <laughs> when when the, when the ball nestles in the back of the net. It's Victor mm-hmm. Boniface. You know, there's no. How you can say it now? He's currently the Nigerian best player now. He's um, mm-hmm. he's the talk of the time, you know. He's you no know, when it's your time, it's your time. So it's Victor's time now, Victor Boniface. So and I'm not surprised that uh, it's actually what, you know, the if my it's my own choice. There's no, I don't have any doubts. And Victor is mm-hmm. Victor Boniface. It's your time. It's your time. And congrats to him and Amaka. <laughs> you know, uh, people that follow Boniface will understand that reference. Yes. Um, and I think I, I would agree with you on that one. I would say, you know, Boniface definitely impressed me the most in, in September. Mm-hmm. Not only just because of his statistics, but also because of the level mm-hmm. that he's doing it at. You know, mm-hmm. maybe Super Eagles debut also yes. provided an assist. Um, yes. He's performing at a very high level consistently mm-hmm. um, and long may it continue. Um, yes. Okay. There you have it, guys. Episode 9 of the Home of Nigeria. Ay, sorry, I don't mistake my podcast. Episode 9 of the Nigeria FC podcast. Um, mm-hmm. There you have it. It's been a fun conversation reviewing the past week of football, as well yes. as choosing our players of the month for September. Um, we'll be back again soon to discuss um, the Super Eagle squad, to discuss the Super Falcon squad, and we'll keep the episodes coming for you guys back to back. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure you like, Make sure you subscribe wherever you are following the podcast from. As always, I've been IoT. You might know me from Eagles Tracker and my co hosts, as always. Midlai, thanks for joining and keep watching, keep sharing, keep subscribing. Thank you for joining. Thank you very much, guys. See you.